Good morning, Thursday. Um, so it looks like most people like camera two better, but they like audio one better. So let me tell you what they are. Camera one is the Sony point and shoot, the DSC HX80, uh, $350 point and shoot camera. That's what I am talking to you on right now. And that is the audio that you are hearing with their built-in stereo mic. Um, what I don't like about this camera is the microphones where they're located on the top makes it extremely difficult for me to windsocket to block out wind noise. So having this camera outdoors is very, very, very difficult to do um, to the point where I have to have a second camera set up to capture audio that can have a windsock and that would be camera two. So camera two was this one. This was the winner, the Sony um, action cam. And this is the cheap one. This one was only like 140 bucks or something like that. Uh, this isn't even like the super good one. This is this is the, the 20, I think, it, I don't know. Whatever, I got it in my, in my description down below. It says exactly what Sony this is. Um, this, was camera two and audio two. You guys liked audio one better, this one, but you liked camera two better, this one. Camera two is more of a fishbowl kind of a look, where camera one is more straight on with me. Um, camera two was fishbowl. So I use camera two outside a lot because what I did, as you see, I put a rubber band with a windsock over the microphones and no cover on the front because the covers just fog up and the cover got a scratch. So there's a chip like in the in the viewing video, there'll be like a little mark on the screen that drives me crazy. So I don't run the lid. So what I do is I just put a rubber band to hold this from falling out and I put a piece of the windsock right over the microphones. So that's how you can get audio from this without having the external mic that for some reason is now making a clicking sound. So this was audio two. You guys liked audio one better. Okay, enough about the camera. So I got a call this morning at 6.40 uh, in the morning, my ex-wife. Uh, I see her number and I'm like, oh shit, what's wrong? So, you know, I answered the phone because they were over last night. And I'm like, oh, uh, hello? And she's like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sitting at my computer, what are you doing? And she's like, uh, I need your help. I was like, well, what's wrong? Matthew's tie, his tie for school, came completely undone. And she don't know how to tie a tie. I'm like, uh, I was like, okay, well, uh, she's like, can we meet somewhere? And I was like, yeah. So I told her where to meet. So, oh, dark dirty this morning, I'm hauling Bud out there to, to meet her to fix the kid's tie. So we got the kid's tie fixed and, and tied around his neck. They have a, um, a special, they had to wear their white button front shirt, long sleeve with their tie today for school. Um, so had to make sure that he was squared away. So, all right. So that was this morning. So like Hillary Clinton said about Obama, you know, who do you want to get that 3 a.m. call? Daddy got that 640 call and daddy showed up. That's right. Take care of them boys. We're headed to Pooler and uh, we're gonna do a yard that that lady said it cannot go any longer. She needs the bushes trimmed down to below the window height on the side yard. Uh, so I'm a little bit nervous about this one and hopefully um, it's not gonna be too, too bad. She said it's some pine cones, but lots of pine needles and lots of leaves. There's gonna be a lot of leaves on the south side of her home. But what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna hack the shit out of them hedges and then we're gonna pull them out and then we're gonna um, we're gonna mow we're just gonna mow mulch all the pine straw that's sitting on top of her yard we're gonna mow mulch it all into the beds so we're gonna take that pine straw and we're gonna utilize that pine straw to spruce up her beds um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time raking I'll blow down the side yard where there's going to be a lot of, I believe, oak leaf tree or oak tree leaves. Um, I think that's what's there. And I know there's going to be, I know there's small leaves going to be there. So we'll blow down that side yard just, just to clear it away for the mower, but that's all dirt there anyways. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mow the shit out of it and then maybe take the fine pieces and blow that to the backyard and then mulch the shit out of that. So the goal is gonna be to not haul away anything from this yard except possibly the big old hedges. Well, not hedges. There's two big bushes on the side yard that she asked me to trim to below the windows. So, I don't know, maybe there was a scare, maybe she had a scare in the neighborhood of a break-in or something, so she never wanted them trim like that. She always asks me to soft cut them. You know, she doesn't want it to look like a museum, she just wants her bushes kind of shaped. Um, so, we'll take a look at that, and uh, we'll probably do that together, do some work together today, and then we'll go back to the house. I'm gonna show you guys um, exactly what I'm talking about with the dog cart that I'm making. So it should be pretty interesting. Uh, it's gonna be fun, I'll tell you that much. It's definitely gonna be fun, and it's not gonna cost me anything to do, just a little bit of time, and I might have to go get some metal. I don't know, I gotta look to see what I have for metal. Uh, I might have to go get some metal uh, to weld up the front end. Yeah, man, that's a lot of pine straw sitting on the grass. So like I said, see all these pine straw beds? I'll take the mower and I'll side shoot it and I'll just go back and forth and just bring all the straw up into the beds and give her free pine straw and then these bushes here is what we're gonna cut down real low you can see right here is the height she used to have it at so we're gonna get in here and we're gonna hack those up right now Nice and ugly, I think so. is what am I going to do with these clippings? Clippings are going to get canned, put in the bed of my truck, brought home, put at the curb, and the county's going to take them for free.
So it's a toss up uh, when you tr do the bushes like I did with the loppers. Clean up super simple because you don't have a bunch of shit everywhere. You just grab the big branches that you lopped off. Um, but it's a little bit more time consuming. So, yeah, it's a trade off. Uh, depends on your mindset, I guess. But that's some really thick stuff there, too, though. So the hedge trimmers wouldn't have made it through. I mean, that's one inch around. You're not going to. You're not going to cut through that with hedge trimmers, not without um, causing possible damage. So next, uh, we got to uh, turn the bushes. By rounding the front like that, rounding the top down, it takes off that museum look. So now when we cut the top, it's going to look nice, full bushes, but not like a museum. I might have explained to you guys in the past that if you take the extension off of your blower then you can blow out your beds better without um, picking up all the straw or mulch or rock or whatever it is. When you take that extra chute off the extension tube you make it more like a shotgun blast of air and it'll catch the big stuff and not the small stuff like leaves. When you have the extension on, it's more like a, a sniper rifle. Uh, so, or, you know, it's like a hurricane versus a tornado. A hurricane will just blow it all out. A tornado will make a line, you know, so watch. mulch the shit out of everything. So let me go ahead and continue uh, prepping stuff up for mowing and then I'll be back. I'll show you what we got going on.
that wasn't bad at all. Considering how bad it was, the amount of uh, pine straw that was on the ground, good lord, plus all the, the clippings, not bad at all. Looks good. Can't complain. And we put the straw back into the bed. So I can't complain. Hopefully the customer won't either. Look at all these leaves falling immediately. <laughs> This whole area was destroyed with leaves. This whole area here looked like this here. All that. Hopefully that shows on this camera, but so uh, look at that. Oh my god. In 10 minutes it's gonna be like I wasn't even here. So what we just did at that house there with the loppers, um I I you know like sometimes like I'll title this maybe, I don't know, um loppers or hedge trimmer which one for you I don't know um, but it's not like to say that one's better than the other you know that's not my point in making videos like this my point is for you guys to have an open mind and when you have a job in front of you that needs to be done don't necessarily always just think well I'll just grab my hedge trimmer or I'll just grab my edger or you know but think, what else could I do? What else could I use? And is there an advantage if I use that? You know, um, and eventually, you get efficient at or proficient at more than just one tool, and you can find that you can do other things. Um, you know, without without always using the same thing, like your hedge trimmer. You know, um, if I used my hedge trimmer there and then saved some of the big pieces for just my handsaw or something, I would have had a mess to clean up. And, but by doing it with the loppers, you can control your cleanup because you're cutting one branch and it's taking all the leaves off. And you know when you go in there with the hedge trimmers and try doing that, you start cutting pieces of leaves and then you have all these leaves and debris and a whole bunch of crap to clean up. So there's a plus side and a downside to each tool. And so my point for you guys is, you know, really you younger guys just coming up is um, keep an open mind. That's all, just keep an open mind. Um, not 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 what what you see us doing what you see me doing isn't necessarily the only way to do certain things so you know keep an open mind with being able to accomplish your task in many different ways and that's going to make you a more well-rounded um, company you know you'll be able to do more things in the future as other jobs come up you'll say oh yeah well yeah I can't I could do that with my loppers, I, or I could do that with my hand snips, or you know, I don't need my hedge trimmer for that. And maybe you go out there and you start a job at 6:30 in the morning while everybody's still asleep because you know you can knock it out doing your hand snips, and you know, start start getting things underway without making too much noise. I don't know. There's advantages and disadvantages to every tool, and that's my point. Just keep an open mind. That's all. All right, let me show you guys what we got here. Um, this used to be a watch out dogs this used to be a baby hauler okay um it had the trailer it was a, a for a baby and it had the bar that came out here it came out like this and then it curved and it went to go behind a bicycle so if you look up like um bicycle baby trailer you'll see one of these frames with these wheels okay they put air you put air in them and but it has the cover has that whole big cover, has the mesh screening and all that to keep bugs out. Well, I took all that apart, I removed the bar here, and I welded up my own triangle and made a trailer for this to mount to a trike, a three-wheel bicycle. And then I used to, the electric bicycle, and then I used to put my son right here, would sit here, and he could lean back onto the basket here, and he would sit there nice and comfortable, put his feet up right here. And it was very safe because then the bike was way up here. Um, so, you know, there was no way that he was going to hit any moving parts on the bicycle. And that was it. We used to cruise around the neighborhood. So what I'm going to do is I am going to basically cut all this triangle stuff off. And I am going to come up. I'm going to come with a bar coming up this way to the center of where your bicycle handlebars go to the gooseneck and then the forks down below okay then we'll have the electric wheel right here on the forks that can pivot to the handlebars 
right here. And then I'll be behind it. So it'll be two wheels in the front, one wheel in the back that turns so I can manage which way it goes and it'll come up with handlebar just like a bicycle. So it'll be bicycle handlebar, gooseneck, to the bicycle little frame where the bearings go to the fork. And then that's it. The rest of the bike's thrown out. And then we just weld it to here and then that will be the 20 inch electric wheel. Follow me? And then we'll get this crap off of here and I'll make it doggy safe. So I'll be behind it back here like this holding the handlebar with the electric motor and I can walk and use the electric motor or and I can program the electric motor to not go faster than a certain speed um, or I can have my skateboard or rollerblades or anything I want and just follow behind and Rocky will lead the way and so it'll be at a little electric cart but that's my plan that's what I want to do uh, so really I mean all I gotta do is go find a junk 20 inch bike and uh, just cut it off and weld it to there and I'm done literally I'm done I put the battery anywhere um, and then just run it like a regular electric bike and it's a done deal so I don't know what do you think I think that'd be neat and I could take Rocky downtown and mess around with people like oh and then another thing to talk about is oh yeah this is electric by the way and that's really all that it's for just conversation piece that's hey, electric what yeah it's electric well can you make me one sure five thousand dollars hustle all right guys we are done for the day just wanted to show you my little dinner here some really nice big thick juicy cheeseburgers lettuce tomato ketchup mustard mayonnaise what a nice little salad grape tomatoes shredded carrots Iceberg lettuce, blue cheese dressing. Huh? Hey man, we worked hard. Rocky, say bye to everybody.